Hello, this is Gray Hughes. Uh, I've been covering the Suzanne Morphew case for a few days now, and last night on the show we had an interesting guest come on named John Schmitz, who is someone who knew the husband of Suzanne Morphew in Indiana. The Morphews had moved from Indiana in 2019 to Colorado. Okay, and they moved to Colorado and in a home in between Maysville and Monarch, Colorado, about 120 miles from Denver. Okay, so this individual knew Barry in Indiana, and he described to us sort of a violent encounter he had with Barry, and he, and he said he saw a look in his eyes that looked like a demon. Okay, this is just his words. All right, so I will be playing that interview in this video as well. Also, today, Barry put out a statement on Facebook to the public asking for the safe return of his wife. Okay, now this case is a strange one because there's very little information available on it. And it took place near the home, apparently. And the home is at 19057 Puma Path. You can see it right here. It's out in the media. And it's a $1.7 million home. Let me show you what it looks like inside the home. All right, here is the outside right there. And another shot of the outside, outside. Now, inside is absolutely amazing home. And I believe it's on seven acres. It's pretty isolated. They do have some neighbors near them. And here's outside again. And here's a creek that's down below the house. And it could be a lot swifter this time of year as the snow melts. Okay, so there is the home. And again, that home is located right there. You can actually see it from the road if you go down here. This street view here is October 13th, 2015. And there's the home right there. So somewhere along this path, you can see it is pretty steep right there. Somebody could be on a bike and fall over there. But with all the search and rescue teams they've had out there, you could easily find her. Now, if you look at this, everything slopes up. So anybody, It'd be hard to get lost. All you'd do is go downhill and you'd be at the creek. Okay, especially on this side. You couldn't get lost on that side. And on this side, you could fall off. However, people would have found you at this point. So it, it appears that Suzanne apparently went on a bike ride. That's what we're being told. Uh, they have, Barry and Suzanne have two daughters and they were not in town. I've heard that they were camping, I've heard other things, but they weren't in town at the time. And Barry was in Denver, he says. Okay, so it was Suzanne home alone on Mother's Day. And apparently she went biking. But we don't, we don't have any proof that she actually went biking. I've said that since the beginning, that nobody said that they could see her on surveillance. All it was was somebody said that she went biking and that they found a bike. Now, the police haven't come forward and said that they found a bike. They said they found some personal items. They have not confirmed that they found a bike. Okay, it sounds very likely that they found a bike based on what other people are saying, but we don't know that. They did find personal items. Maybe the bike is one of those items in the two and a half mile stretch from 225, which is right here, and it runs into 50 right there. Okay, now this road is how you would get onto 50 and go biking. I don't know if I would want to go biking on 50 because it, uh, you know, there's, it's a freeway and it's pretty treacherous if you go off to the side, as we just saw a moment ago. But apparently they searched the two and a half mile stretch and I think this is the two and a half mile direction that they went towards Maysville there. And they said they found no additional items and they did not find her. Apparently one of Suzanne's daughters called to check on her because she hadn't called 
and asked the neighbor to check on her. Now, I think the daughter believed that she was biking, that her mother was biking that morning and hadn't heard from her in a while and then asked the neighbor to check. Still, at this point, we do not have any proof that she actually went biking. How did, how did the daughter know that she was biking? Was it a text message that she received? If it was a phone call, that would give more evidence towards it being a bike ride. If it was a text message, well, as we've seen in many other cases, that text message could have been sent by anyone. So at this point, she is just missing. I think the, most, the two most likely scenarios are that she was either abducted or she never went biking and something happened to her and... It was staged to look like she went missing biking. Okay, um, so those are the two most likely scenarios in my mind. I think the injury scenario isn't very likely because they would have found her and they seem to rule out an animal attack that people have mentioned from the very get-go. Uh, I'm sure there are mountain lions in the area. I mean, this is Colorado. And if you call them pumas, I'm sorry, we call them mountain lions out here. <laughs> so anyways, the uh, that's where we're at with this. So right after this, I will play the Facebook message from Barry. And then right after that, I will play the interview that I had with John P. Schmitz. Okay, he's the person who had an encounter with Barry in Indiana. So right now I will be playing the message from Barry Morphew and then right after that I will play the interview that I had with John Schmitz, the man in Indiana on a construction site who had an encounter with Barry Morphew. Okay, so let's get started on that right now. Oh Suzanne, if anyone is out there I can hear this that has you. Please, we'll do whatever it takes to bring you back. We love you. We miss you. Your girls need you. No questions asked. However much they want, I will do whatever it takes to get you back. Honey, I love you. And I want you back so bad. All right, so go ahead. Let us know. Okay, so uh, I live here in Indianapolis, uh, area in Indiana, and uh, I was a contractor on a job uh, at the, it was in December of 2018. And uh, I'm a mason contractor. It's a big commercial job. Uh, and Barry was the landscaper on this job. And uh, I had nothing but problems with that guy. And he was, a t uh, he was basically a job bully. And uh, the very first encounter I had with him uh, was not pleasant, but the last encounter I had with him, he assaulted me twice. And the second time I put him in a transport hold or basically a headlock to stop him from attacking me and my guys. Wow. Uh, the police come out, no arrests were made. Uh, and then later, about six months later, uh, the Boone County decided to charges both for disorderly conduct. Now, full disclosure, I was actually running for mayor of Indianapolis at the time, and I think this was a politically based deal because this was really a, a just a scuffle. Uh, but what I saw that day in this guy's eyes was nothing but, but evil. I mean, he was just so out of control uh, and he had been a bully to the electricians wow. and I just felt like wow uh, I saw this story come across my feed this morning and I saw that last name and I saw Indiana and I saw Colorado and I knew that he had moved out there and then when I saw her, what this was about it just made my stomach turn uh, because you know I have a psychology degree uh, from the University of Rockies uh, mm -hmm. just coincidentally okay. and uh and i'm a mason contractor i know that's unusual but 
I just saw, I've not seen that kind of evil in somebody's eyes, but only a few times in my life. Wow. And when I saw this story, I just thought to myself that this is not good. So, and I know people are, are wanting to know more and more about this and I don't want people to jump to conclusions and- uh, Right. Well, but, what did it seem, like how did that come about where you got in the, the scuffle there? Like what happened? Okay, so we, uh, uh, he was not scheduled to be on the job for three days. We were finishing up the very last part, the dumpster enclosure of this of this building. And uh, we had our scaffold in his way and I had my guys there uh, taking the scaffold down and he came around and I was, I was getting ready to go to another job to get some supplies. And he came around and he threw my guys' his tools out in the road and verbally assaulted them just after he had verbally assaulted the electricians and my guys came and got me. I came back, I talked to him and he was just unruly. So I was going to get the superintendent and he started yelling at me and came over and body bumped me. And wow. I'm like, I just backed up and I went to try to find the superintendent. I could not find him. I said, you know what? I'm not leaving my guys back with this guy. I'm going to go get our scaffold out of the way. We're almost done. I'm moving on. And while I was taking one of the braces off, he came and blindsided me and pushed me down. And then I got back up and then I took care of, I, I stopped him and, yeah. and put him in a headlock <laughs> and pushed him up against the wall. Yeah, he seems like and, a pretty big athletic guy too. You know? Yeah, he was bigger than me, but I protect my guys. I'm 6'3 and 200 pounds. I'm like a tall, skinny guy, but uh, I just, it's just one of those things where obviously it sticks in my mind because he ended up taking a diversion on this. Uh, he was in the process of moving to Colorado. Like I said, they didn't roll us up in this for six months. He got a notification, didn't show up and had a warrant out for his arrest. Well, he turned himself in, signed a diversion. I was not signing this diversion. I was not guilty. I ended up, you know, going, the, they dropped the case because they had no evidence they had no case against me it was political that's a totally separate story i don't want that to take away from yeah this. oh i was just going to say that um can you does it seem like he's somebody that might be able to snap yes i mean it was i mean this is a typical bully situation this was uh uh you know once i put him once i stopped him and the way i stopped him i mean i was i mean i was i i, I stopped him I didn't punch him. I didn't do anything. I wanted to, but I did not do that. I just stopped the situation until he stopped fighting. And then he was, he was like scared. So, uh, but he's, you know, he's definitely bigger than me. There's no doubt. And, uh, I don't, I don't know what, the, I don't know what the issue was. I still don't. That was the first and last time I ever met the man until this popped up. And wow. I'm like, and I don't think I'm going to be the only one. If you look at his rap sheet, he's been fighting with the city of Carmel and other people he sued. He just was a very confrontational person. Hmm. Uh, so, you know, that's the, you know, that's what I, uh, it's just one of the things where I just, I still can close my eyes and picture the, just the, the, the his eyes, you know, and just that he was out of control. Like a like he was enraged. Yes, uh, I, and I would say uh, d like he was had a demon. I mean, yeah. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty scary. So I mean, I know you can't. You know, obviously you can't go. Wow, well that equals the reason she's missing. But it's just sort of something that popped into your head. You know, just like whoa. You know, wonder if that has something to do with it, right? Yeah, and really this is not the missing part uh this is for if if something if it doesn't come up that way but at the same time you know when there's a story that's in the you know to put light on things to to get everything out into the light is usually how you know bad things get exposed uh and like i said i don't have anything to to gain from this i, I had some people on facebook and probably the Facebook post you saw that said I was out for self promotion and all this and I was a troll and it's like, you know what, I'm just trying to help with this situation. It's tragic. But it's one of those things that has hit home with me uh, because yeah. I was involved with this man. And uh, I just, 
I just feel like it's it needs to be known what's up with 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 what we're dealing with here. And I, I just think there's a lot of stuff that surrounds this case that just doesn't really line up. Yeah, well, things that are were weird are weird to me. I've said it. I don't, you know, it's that uh, you, that you put a, a hundred thousand dollar reward in three days. That's just a lo- really large amount that n- normal people doesn't usually do that. It usually builds up. There's also um, things like uh, the police said he's cooperating, but. And we hope he continues to do so. That was kind of a weird little adding comment that they made there. Also, you know, he wasn't in he wasn't in town, nor were any of the kids, apparently. But there's really no evidence at this point that I've seen that that she even went on the bike ride. You know, there's there's a bike found, but how do we know that she really ever went on that bike ride? So until all, any of those things are filled in, we just don't really know. But uh, what are what are some of the things you've noticed? Well, you know, what I've told about my story is all I know about him personally, but I, I was a cyclist here. I raced and won races. I knew a lot of people in the cycling committee, I mean, community here, and I've asked some of my friends and they don't seem to remember her being a rider. Now we have all different levels, types of riders here. So, I mean, she could have gone out on her own and ridden, but yes, I don't, who goes out on a ride on Mother's Day? And another question I have is, I don't know if you're married, I'm married, but if I'm not, you know, around my wife on Mother's Day, <laughs> I'm not going to pick that as a time to be gone. Yeah. So, I mean, that right there is sort of a red flag, uh, but that's all speculation. I just, I'm just here to tell you my Your story, yeah. version of what this is. And, uh, well, it's definitely yeah. an eye opener. It's, uh, you know, to, picture that he you know in your story that he got so angry and in your the way you pictured him he looked almost like a demon like he was so upset so it it was just very just like i said my stomach turned over when i saw the last name this morning and then when i saw who was it it i just had that pit in my stomach of uh this is not good and i called my superintendent that was on that job and I told him, I said, you know what, we're not going to be remembered for all the good work we've done here in Indianapolis, but we'll be remembered as the two guys that were involved in this mess. And and it's nothing but a mess that this, this guy has caused here in my situation. It cost me a year of my life and attorneys and everything to clear a name that I shouldn't have ever been, uh, yeah. you know, involved with. Yeah, and uh, you called the tip line too, just to let them know. Yeah, they, had... they did call me back. I called them early this morning, as soon as I found something out, and they did call me back. The uh, Colorado FBI called me back, and she was very interested in my take. But as as properly, uh, you know, it's, this is not a, uh, a criminal thing yet. Right. Uh, yeah. So it's still a missing persons. Uh, it's just part of the so, investigation. It's part of the investigation yeah. and, and let it play out. I mean, I, I have no ill will against this guy about anything. Uh, I almost felt like as a psychologist, I feel like, you know, I wanted to try to help the guy, but he would have no part of it, you know, and, and because anger is, is just like an addiction. It, it is something that it just escalates and, you know, I've seen it in people and it's just something that it's it, I, I think at some point they realize they're not even doing it so uh but yeah. that's you know that's that's sort of my story on this yeah and uh, i would just tell people just let let the let it work itself out and and we can hope and pray that we find her and and that everything turns out okay it's just a misunderstanding but as you know in any missing person's case the longer it goes the more likely it is that there's you know some kind of other issue there so. yeah and it's a little bit weird that they if she did just sort of get in an accident they wouldn't have found her because it's everything sort of funnels down it would have been easy for them to find her i think with search dogs well, and the other or, thing is they lived in a house here in alexandria i guess that was sort of in a, you know it was a little bit out but it wasn't so secluded but the picture i saw of their house it is like a compound out in the middle of nowhere yeah it's and, uh there's a few homes around there but yeah it's a it's a 1.7 million dollar home sort of in the woods yeah i think seven acres they have so it's pretty big you know yeah so somebody that 
you know, that she seems like a very social person uh, to me from what I don't know her, but what I've seen, you know, she has a foundation and it, it just doesn't match somebody to be in isolation like that. It doesn't seem like it would be a happy fit. Hmm. So, I mean, I know there's a lot of different things and you know, that's the psychologist in me. I like to analyze, you know, people and I have and that experience in that. And 30 years of being in the construction business, I've seen them come and go. So I have a real life, uh, you know, <laughs> people judgments. Probably almost uh, like being a bartender in the construction, it, it you know, you're, just, you're even, and a, a psychologist for sure. Cause well, you know, and it's, it's, it's really, I tell people, I said, well, I'm a bricklayer, but I have a master's degree in psychology. I don't know if that makes me dumb or, or smart. I mean, <laughs> uh, but I just enjoy that type of business and, uh, but I also enjoy uh, counseling people and I wanted to have credentials to be able to be credible and being able to help people the best I can. Yeah. And so that's why I went back later in life to get that master's degree in psychology. But uh, it's, it's just troubling. I mean, you know, you see these cases uh, and you, it just, your heart breaks for the whole family. I mean, you know, this, there's a mom missing and, you know, it just, it's not, this is, there's no good. There's no happy ending to this unless she just comes back. And yeah, you know, that's, that's the unfortunate truth. Well, and the thing is, is even if she just wandered off somewhere and they find her, your story is still, still true. It, it is what it is. It's not like it's something that, uh, you know what I mean? It's still added context to, the the case because right now i mean what you're saying adds to the the story and maybe all the pieces of the puzzle will come together and it'll make sense even towards what the final outcome is and it, but it might not like if she literally um you know fell into a hole out there somewhere let's just say that well um then that means the violence that you witnessed might not have anything to do with her being in the hole but it still was part of the story as it was being um, presented, so. Well, and I think that, you know, too, it's one of those things where I know that if he treated me this way, I know that there's others that he treated because it, it was just a symptom of his problem. I was just a, a punching bag for that day. Yeah. So, you know, you're right, that that may expose that, that problem uh, and, you know, like I said, I would hope that people get uh, help before it gets they get too far down the road. Uh, you know, I do relationship counseling, and I've I've seen people that you know. To me, the puzzling thing is you can love so much somebody so much to get married and have a big ceremony, and then end up hating that person more than anybody in the world. How do we get to that point? Uh, and I I just I think part of it. It could be this virus that's going around. I've seen people doing crazy things uh, in, you know, domestic violence is up. Uh, just it's exposed weaknesses in a lot of areas, in health, in relationships, in business, in all sorts of things. Hmm. Yeah. So that's just sort of, a, this is just one of the symptoms of people sort of losing it. So if I would say anybody that's watching this, please take a breath, maybe turn off the news for a while and just, chill decompress <laughs> a lot of folks are you know and this is just fueling the fire on a lot of people's emotions i mean i've heard from people that have you know from oregon from all different places that are following this case and it's like oh my god it just you know i guess we love uh this kind of drama shows and maybe that's our media that's built it up but yeah. you know it I, I just don't like where our society is going in a lot of ways yeah no I, I, I see exactly what you're saying. This My show, what I try to do is just put out uh, facts. I cover cases and try to work with the facts and then try to figure out what happened. And what you're adding is just a piece of facts of, a, of an encounter that you had with, uh, was his name Barry, I think is his name? Yeah, Barry. Yeah, yeah. and that's just a, that's a fact of something that actually happened, and it's just sort of in there, and will that be part of a the puzzle we don't know yet but yeah and that's and that's all this that's all this really is 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 uh just a character uh you know a, a honest character you know description of of what i saw here and it was during that time when they were sort of moving out there 
And honestly, I thought, who would be married to this guy? I had no idea. I'm like, whoever whoever has to deal with this guy, I felt very, very sorry for. Him. So, yeah. uh, like did I said, I, I he just kind of seemed. Came. Did he seem kind of like? Uh, I'm trying to picture because I when I first time I saw him, I had this picture of. Uh, my friends will even say that something similar to what you're describing. I just have the you know I don't know what it is. I've just known people. And so, I mean, it's weird to just visually see somebody and have that feeling. But I was wondering if, did he just seem like he flew off the handle, like out of nowhere, on on nothing almost? Just sort of like, hey, what are you doing? You know, just. No, no, that's not. I, I've seen those people. This guy was mad when he stepped out of the truck. Like I said, he just got, before he harassed my guys, yeah. he was harassing the electrician, kicking there because they were trying to hang exterior lights. And he's trying to do his landscaping. Three days early, he wasn't even supposed to be there. The superintendent was just irritated as could be with this guy. And and then he came around and got my guys. And then he came around and, and then when I went to help them, he got me. So, and the first encounter I had with him, Jeez. when he tried to dump a big load of mulch in front of my materials, I said, hey, I'll move myself. All you gotta do is ask me. He went off then. So I had not had one, I had not one conversation with this man that was civil. They were all off the hook. Now, the time when he was at, the first time I saw him, he was just being sort of jerky, you know, just sort of yelling and like, oh, maybe he's having a bad day. The second time he was out of control. And even the police, when they came over to talk to me, we've already taken Mr. Happy's statement because he was determined that I needed to go to jail. I mean, he was just, I mean, honestly, <laughs> I don't know why the police didn't take him that day. Uh, I just think they thought it would go, die down and it would go away. And it did until they brought it back up you know, when the uh, assistant district attorney decided to charge us for, I think it was disorderly conduct. It was some just sort of goofy charge. Actually, they called you back and they seemed interested, right? The FBI, right? Yeah, they asked me if I would testify. And, and my attorney uh, told me, don't talk to the police. I don't, I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to gain. I, I don't, <laughs> I, my, I just, like I said, I'm just worried uh, for this family. Uh, and, and I, I sort of know what they're going through because of my dealings with this guy. And, uh, and no one can, I mean, maybe my foreman and my guys that were there that day saw this anger and, and another electrician, but uh, it's very hard to describe the amount of rage that was there. And it, my professional opinion is that could this guy do something to somebody that's very hurtful? Yes. Uh, in my personal opinion, hell yes. So, yeah. you know, I, I'm hoping for the best, but yeah. I'm very troubled by this. Uh, shortly after I put together this video this morning and before I, I uploaded it, obviously, I contacted John Schmitz again on Facebook and he informed me that the CBI reached out to him again this morning and asked him a bunch of follow-up questions and he provided them more detail okay so i found that interesting that they're calling him back and they they seem very interested in what he has to say okay so thank you all for watching this video and as i always say until next time be safe out there yeah i've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now and during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector, flag rejector. I'm a certified human lie detector. Gonna get ya on a stretcher if you try and play me like an old projector. Crime sector is my nectar. Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, freak connector. And I'm always gonna be a pup protector. Fool deflector, interceptor. And I'm meaner than a specter with a vector on his pector with all respect, ya. Just remember, I've a temple for conjecture. I have no agenda, I'm no pretender. And I'll serve it to you straight without the blender. And in the end, I'm gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work. Alright, everybody, talk to you later.